All right. What we are going to talk about this Saturday morning is decluttering your home stress-free. My name is Olga St. Pierre. I am a real estate agent here in um, our community uh, with Keller Williams Real Estate. I've been serving clients in New Jersey and Pennsylvania uh, for the last 11 years. We have a team of specialists because we, not, we only have a limited amount of time. And our team mission truly is to lead 10 to make everyone's dream of home ownership true. And we help you to have a responsible and sustainable home ownership as well. We do have services to help you move anyone in US and Canada. And we are your virtual yellow pages now. We have an extensive concierge services to help you with marketing your home when you decide to make a move, uh, contractors for home improvements, stagers, organizers, Anyone that you can think of, we most likely have some suggestions for you. So let's get started. Why are we talking about cluttering? Uh, when I did my research, I found some very interesting statistics. Did you know that 80% of what we own, we actually rarely use? Just think about that, right? And when you are walking around your home today, just take a look around and see what you have and ask yourself, when was the last time you used it? People spend on average 55 minutes a day looking for things, right? If you take that in perspective, it is two weeks out of the year. There are people and companies that are making money on this right now. Have you seen uh, that product? I think it's called Square, where you can put that on the back of your remote or on, the, or on your car keys and, or house keys. That way when you're looking for them and you can't find them in your home, you actually get to press the button and it's uh, beeping somewhere in your house or maybe even GPS connected to your phone and you know where to find them. So, and the most important thing that I found fascinating is that decluttering can help you and reduce your housework by up to 40%. So I thought that was a game changer for me, right? If we can uh, lessen the amount of hours that we spend cleaning our home, that is the goal and that is truly amazing. So what we're going to cover today is why are we talking about decluttering, uh, room by room plus suggestions, on some things to make it easier for you and actually keep up with the clean that you actually have done already. Uh, talking about what are we keeping, sorting, organizing, and donating, and then you will walk away with an actual action plan that is manageable, that is realistic and doable. So why are we talking about decluttering? These are common things that I hear from my friends, family, and clients. You don't know where to start, it grows over time if it's just left alone, right? We all have stuff. I have a husband and two children, and I really think it's their mission in life to bring more stuff in the home for me to clean and go through. Over time, it becomes too much, right? It just adds up and it adds up and sometimes becomes painful when it's a lot. And people always ask me, well, where do I start? What am I keeping? For how long? I'm afraid to throw things out because I may need them down the road. Right? So all of those things we're going to touch upon a little bit today. So think of it this way. Most of the time we think on two levels. One is the conscious level and one is subconscious level. Subconsciously is what we do almost like an autopilot. So when you get up in the morning, you go to the bathroom, you brush your teeth, and then you go put on a cup of coffee. And we don't think about things, those things, because those are our habits. Those, this is our routine that we do on a regular basis. This is us doing things on a subconscious level, right? Conscious is when we stop ourselves and say, oh, look, we are running out of milk. I'm going to write it on a refrigerator, make a note, and, and then when I go to the grocery store, this is what I need to buy, right? Because you have to stop, you actually have to think about it and then make a note, right? It's not part of your routine. So the research has been done that actually shows that clutter can affect us on both levels. Okay? And the worst one is actually subconscious level, where it sits somewhere in the back of our minds. We're not actually thinking about it, but it's just sitting there and it's rubbing. And it's like a never ending loop that just keeps running around and around. Clutter does weigh it down. Okay? Clutter, it has been proven, can be a source of stress, depression, health issues, for sure, uh, family, dynamic challenges. And I've seen that very often where the wife tells me, I am ready, I can declutter, I am ready to make a move. Then the husband's like, mm -mm, 
I am not throwing this away. I know I'm going to need this, right? So this is important to consider. Also, is clutter accumulate your energy stagnates? Think about it. If you walk into a room that has a pile of books or a pile of stuff and you know it's dusty, you, even your mood sours, right? That's what we're talking about, your energy being stagnated, okay? So when you think about declaring clutter, it can make you feeling tired and it can make you feeling overwhelmed, okay? So if the clutter does bother you because you are here to talk about it, this is actually the first step in conquering this and actually making a plan. So this is what we're going to do. We're actually going to put a plan together. And what I did is I broke it down in chunks and I made it small and manageable steps so that we, we can actually make it happen. So first of all, you need to decide on how much time you will be spending to declutter and you need to set a timer, okay? So no, you cannot use your phone as your timer. And the reason being is because our phones are one of our biggest distractions, right? You get a notification, someone sent you a text message, then you saw that you're, something is going on on Facebook or Instagram and you have to check it, right? Because they feel like if you don't, something is going to happen. So you need to use a regular timer, like a kitchen timer. You can use your oven timer or microwave is the best one. Your first time is you need to decide what you're comfortable with and set aside a time. Experts recommend an hour. It is up to you. If you think an hour is overwhelming, then do 30 minutes, right? And at least it's more than 15 minutes. I think 15 minutes is not enough to get stuff accomplished. So do 30 minutes, 45 minutes, or an hour, okay? Ask yourself to be fully present for your appointment, okay? So think of this as an appointment with yourself. So if you had a doctor's appointment, you're not going to decide an hour before you go, oh, I just don't feel like going, I'm not gonna get in the car. You don't do that. So think of an appointment for your first decluttering session the same way. You're going to respect yourself and you're going to keep that appointment, okay? Then you need to change into comfortable clothing. I can tell you for a fact that you're going to work up some sweat. And the reason being is you're going to be carrying stuff around. Maybe you're going to be bringing boxes from the basement depending on where you're working. We need to wear comfortable clothing, something that's not going to rub, that's not going to make you uncomfortable, maybe some yoga pants, leggings. Then you actually need to have something to eat and bring some water while you work. And that will happen. You start to get into it and you're like, oh, you know what? I'm hungry. I'm going to go grab a sandwich. And then you know what happened? Then you're going to get on your phone or start reading or something. And guess what? Your hour has been wasted by because you got distracted, Okay. Right? When we're working out, when we are doing and moving, we're going to be thirsty. That's why you need your water. Okay, you're going to grab a sip of water and you're going to get right back to what you are doing. Then put on some music, light a candle, open a window, whatever makes you happy to help you get into your, a mood, get you into full of energy state. And grab a notebook. Find a notebook that's going to be strictly for your notes, for your decluttering sessions. It will help you jot down some notes and reminders and things to remember. Okay, so that's important. All right, here's your plan. What you, here's what you're going to need. Okay, you're, you're going to need some tools. Okay, you're definitely going to need a trash can and recycle can. And then we're going to need some storage bins. My recommendation is get clear storage bins so that we can see what's in them. Okay, then find some post-it notes in different colors for, lab, for labeling. And then we're going to label the boxes and totes with a couple of things. One is put away and keep. Another one is to donate, undecided, throw away and sell. Okay. And the goal for your first session is not to put everything in the undecided bin. Okay. We're actually going to have a little bit in every, every, every bin. And here's a couple of guidelines to keep in mind as you're going through your one hour session is Figure out and see when you grab that item, is it going to bring you joy and make you smile and support your vision for a new beginning, right? For a plan of going forward, or if it's not, right? If you actually hold it and it's not making you smile and kind of making you cringe, or maybe you bring bad memories, then you need to decide which way and which bin it's going to be actually leaving your home and leaving your life, okay? So then you are going to stay focused for your time log, okay? And make notes. If you're not sure, or maybe if it's something that you think that your kids or your friends are going to like, make a note to get in touch with them, right? That is your reminder you're being planned afterwards. 
Once you are done, you are done. You can congratulate yourself, pat yourself on the back and say, I did it. Okay. And jot some notes down. How much did you get accomplished in that time frame? Are you happy with the amount of work that you've got done? Do you think that next time you need more time or less time? And also decide when that next time is going to come. I have found uh, people being very productive and getting and uh, making a good headway on their plan on Saturday mornings, right? You haven't quite started with the weekend. You haven't started running around. So decide maybe the 45 minute to an hour time slot first thing in the Saturday morning may be a good idea. All right, let's break it down and talk about separate different rooms in your home and let's start with kitchen. I don't recommend that you getting you get the whole kitchen done at once because you're not going to do it. You're going to get frustrated and then you're just going to throw your hands and say, I'm done. Okay, so let's just start simple. Let's start with two drawers, okay, and then move on. If you clean up just one or two drawers, it's going to give you that sense of satisfaction and you're going to realize that you got started. And that's what's important is the movement, right, of doing something, okay? So in your fridge, okay, you can do your fridge. This is easy because we are in and out, out of it all day long, especially now. Throw away all of expired food, okay? Dairy should be going on the top shelf towards the back because that's where it's cooler. Leftovers, you can put them in the middle shelf in a clear container. And if you want to have fun, right on that container, eat me now. This way, it's also going to prevent you from throwing your food away because you forgot that it was there because it got tucked in somewhere. Fruits and veggies need to be in separate drawers because they need separate uh, humidity. Meat, bottom shelf, and it should be in the dedicated drawer if possible. Drinks and condiments can be on the doors. Okay, and also label where the items should go so you know when they are running low. That's what I've decided to do is I have ketchup on a certain spot and that's the only place where my ketchup is. So if I see that it's starting to run low, I can put it on my list of things to buy next time I go to the grocery store. Definitely use clear storage containers. That way you will know what's in there. You're not going to forget. And also you'll be able to see when you start to run low on things. We do have a food storage guide for you that you can get after this webinar. And the reason why it's helpful is because if the food does not have a label that there has an expiration date, it does not mean that it can last forever, okay? Uh, one of the government agencies actually has, to, has prepared a food storage guide that we can either email to you or mail to you. And it talks about average shelf life for some things that like eggs and other things that don't get labeled, okay? Then what I'm inviting you to do is to think about really how many utensils and cups and plates do you really need, right? So open up some of your cupboards and look at it and see what do you usually use? I bet it's going to be that 20%, right? 80% of things that you don't use. Also check for your utensils from your cups and plates if any of them are chipped. If they are chipped, you need to throw them away because once they start chipping and cracking, all of those things are just going to get bigger and bigger, and we don't want you to eat those chips. How many of the items do you use once a year or less? I invite you to think about and, uh, and look at your, you know, some of your bigger items like um, ice cream maker or maybe air fryer or deep fryer, and really think about it and say to yourself, do I really use it on a regular basis, even if it's a couple times a year? Or when was the last time I used it? If it's been a couple of years, perhaps maybe it's time to take it over to the donation center. And if you have any special items that you got, maybe that you keep in your dining room, touch, pull them out and start using them on a regular basis. If you don't use them at all, yet they have a special meaning, why not enjoy those things right, every day and that way that those items bring you joy. I also have some suggestions here for you on this page. Some of the clear storage containers that are airtight, some uh, good ideas, some of the things that I personally use that will help you maximize the space that you have in your cupboards and uh, be able to be more organized and know exactly what you have in your kitchen. Let's talk about bathrooms, all right? Number one, you need to throw away any products that you don't like to use, including old medicine. This is important. You have to remember that our skin is the largest organ on our body. And we're all guilty. 
because that's what manufacturers do. They spend a lot of money and a lot of research on coming up with the most attractive packaging. I'm just as guilty too. You have something that looks really nice and you just want to buy it just for the way it looks. Maybe not even thinking about what's inside, whether you're going to like how it smells and how it feels in your body. So don't keep those things. If you have lotions that are over six months old, they're too old to put on your body and get those chemicals absorbed into your skin. So throw all that stuff away. Old medicine, definitely check on the expiration dates. It's not recommended that you throw this stuff away or that you recycle it or even flush it down in your toilet. The recommendations are as you actually drop everything off to your police department. Then let's work under our sink, right, in our vanity. You need to group your items that you use every day. If you use certain things in the morning, that's your morning routine. If you use things in the evening, that is going to be your evening routine. You need to use plastic bins to get everything grouped and organized for easy reach. Right? So here's some before and after photos for you of a vanity that we organized. You can see exactly what's in it. You can use uh, some of the shelvings as well to tuck stuff, stuff in. So makeup, very important as well. Most of the time, just think of it as a rule of thumb. It's best not to keep any makeup that is over six months old. Again, the same thing, you're putting it on your face, you're putting, getting, letting it absorb into your skin. Anything that's six months or older, throw it away. And I know it's kind of hard if you buy a sparkly eyeshadow for some special lipstick for maybe a party and you only use it once. However, it's better to throw it away and buy something fresh because you do care for yourself. I have some recommendations for you here on some of the clear bins, as well as a very handy over the door bathroom uh, tool organizer. So, so that way it's all in one place, it's tidy, it's neat. Bedrooms. This is our peaceful place. This is where we go to relax and re-energize and replenish our energy for the next day. Okay, so let's talk about how we can make changes in our bedroom. Did you know that an average US woman keeps about $500 worth of unworn clothes in her closet? Right, that again applies the same thing as if you look in your closet right now, probably 80% of what's hanging in there you're not even using. So let's take the time, even over this weekend, I invite you to do that, is to go through your closet and see what's in there. Okay, here are some guidelines for you. If you haven't worn it in two years, let's consider donating it. So here's something to keep in mind. When I was doing the research for this webinar, the expert said six months. If you haven't used something in six months, you need to donate it or throw it away. I thought that was a little bit extreme. So what I decided to do is make it two years, which gives you, for each season, two seasons to wear something or not, okay? Also consider this. The things that I may like now are not the same things that I liked five years ago, right? So our tastes change, our beliefs, our, our style changes over time. So if it's something out of style and it's, you've had it in your closet for over two years, I invite you to donate it for someone else. The clothes that are staying worn in bad shape, consider throwing away most of it except for a couple of things. If you are doing some yard work or you are in your garden, that is the best time to use clothes that you're not afraid of getting dirty or stink again. Also, if you have um, maybe older sheets or towels that have been stained or really worn, consider donating them to animal shelters or you know, in, in the pet stores where they keep the pets as well. It's a great way. They're always, uh, you know, the, they're always asking for donations of blankets and sheets and towels for the pets that are being there waiting for it to be adopted. And okay. also, if you have clothes that you're, let's say you're, you're waiting to slim up a little bit and you have that something that you really like and you, you say, well, I'm just going to lose a little bit of weight and then I'm going to be able to fit into it, just don't. It's always better to get your goal accomplished and then, you know, as a reward, go and buy yourself one or two pieces because now you are in that, you know, in that state that you were working on. Here's some suggestions for you for organization. You can use cubes and some closet organizers to maximize the use of space, right? So this is, you know, if we have a smaller closet in our bedrooms, definitely use the top and bottom racks for, you know, pants or shorter blouses and um, use shoe racks to make sure that you're using all of your space. 
Okay, make sure you guys see me. Living in family rooms. Okay, let's talk about those rooms. If you have a lot of books and bookcases, I invite you to get those done sooner than later. Books are notorious for attracting dust. Okay, even if you just, you know, if you wipe them on a regular basis, they still love and they attract dust like sponge. So if you go through those books, keep the ones that you plan to reread and then discard the others, okay? If they're in good shape, you definitely can donate them to the library. If they are not in good shape and they're just outdated, consider actually recycling them, okay? Go through your electronics and cords. Those things are important. We're always looking for a cord because we, we can't find something to charge our phones with. If you only go through the ones you currently have, you're probably going to find the ones that you are looking for. My recommendation is you tie them around and then put a rubber band around them and you keep them again in a container like a clear shoe box so you know exactly what's in there. Next, go through your pillows and blankets. If you have furry pets, they love those. They love to sit on blankets, lounge around on pillows. So with time, those things get deflated and they are become ripped. So if that is the case, throw away the ones you have and then replace them with something new and fresh and colorful. Next, go through the pictures. Perhaps it's time for you to update your photos, right? We all love photos. We keep memories of our loved ones. So you can actually go to CVS or Walgreens and print some of the favorite photos. Put them in those frames, update them because looking at them is going to bring you joy and lift up your energy, right? If this is the place where you unwind after coming home from work, it should definitely be uncluttering the way to you. Here are some suggestions for you, right? If you wanted to create a collage of the photos of your loved ones or something else that you enjoy, right? A hobby or some kind of architecture, Here's a great way to display your photos to enjoy them on the walls, and you can even carry them into your bedroom if you'd like. Let's talk about home office. Okay, I am sitting in my home office right now. The goal is to recycle old things, unneeded things, unneeded papers. Again, because paper collects dust, okay, and um, it can actually make you sneeze and actually aggravate your allergies if you have any. You need to file away and scan important documents. This is important. We get so much paper now. And if, it, if it's important to you, it has something to do with your personal finances. There's a couple of ways to keep that information safe. One of the best ways that I found is scanning your documents in and putting it in the cloud. You have a digital filing cabinet. You can use either Dropbox or if you have Gmail, you have Google Drive. Okay, with every Gmail, you get a certain amount of space storage in the cloud, and you can up upload a good amount of quite a few thousands of uh, documents and keep them safe there, just in case if your physical paper gets maybe faded with time, which happens often with receipts, or you spill something on them. If you are getting boggled down with emails, right? For retailers or magazines, you can use an Unroll Me tool online. Just Google Unroll.me and it will help you unsubscribe from some of the emails that may be cloud and you're cluttering your email box and you might have just given up on those things. Here's how I prefer to sort my incoming mail. I get this question all the time. I actually separate it into three slots. I have uh, slots on my desk. The first one is to go through. Those are the things that I definitely want to pay attention and then I decide what to do with it. The second one is to shred and the third one is just paper to recycle. That's it. Don't complicate it any more than that. Junk mail. If you're getting boggled down with junk mail and you know it is truly junk, optoutprescreen.com is the website where you can go and opt out of getting all of those things to make things easier on you. Okay? Make sure you do that because the mail is only going to come. It's never going to stop. So whether it's your home office or a space where you handle all of your paperwork and finances, it will give you more energy to be more comfortable and to work when you consider some of these tips. Let's talk about garage and basement. And I group them together because most of the time it's the same things that you can use to Take advantage of the space that we have in these two rooms in our home, okay? 
what I'm inviting you to do is maximize the space that you have on your walls as well as on your ceiling, believe it or not. That's right. So you can hang shelves to your ceiling and take advantage of it. That is the photo on the, on the left top. If you use certain items only once a year, you know, maybe it is um, holiday, holiday decorations for different holidays, you use clear totes and you keep everything up there, right? If you get some really heavy duty long shelves, they provide a lot of space for you to put things away. And under those shelves, you can hang hooks and then you can take advantage of that wall space by hanging your bikes, tra trailers, uh, landscaping equipment, anything and everything that you can take off the floor and hang it up on the wall, I think is an awesome idea, right? I also encourage you to sort things and group them in uh, categories, whether it's your you know, uh, gardening equipment or maybe it's your sports equipment for your kids. You need to have designated zones as well to store all those things. Here's a couple of suggestions for you for the shelving as well as for the wall organizer. This is what I use in my shed and I love it because everything's on the wall, everything is off the floor and it's easy just to have hang and um, to keep in good shape, in good condition. And of course, once you take stuff off the floor and you use your cell, your, your ceiling in your sh and your walls, now you have room for your car to bring it in because the car is usually the second most expensive um, investments that you have made after your home. What should you shred? I get this question all the time. So here's a rule of thumb. This is what we're going to talk about on, on this slide and on the next one. Number one, you do need to have a, an expensive shredder for your documents. This is the shredder that I use. You can buy it very inexpensively on Amazon. I have a link here for you. Then you also need to have trash bags, all right? Uh, from what I understand is you cannot recycle the paper that you shred, so that gets thrown away. So you need to have regular trash bags. They don't have to be stretchy. They don't have to be smelly. Just regular, plain uh, sh trash bags that you can tie on top. The rule of thumb is, is when you know that you have things to shred, you need to have them in a separate slot or in a box. And then you need to decide whether you're going to shred these things once a week or maybe once a month and you stick to it. Because otherwise, that paperwork is going to pile up with time and then it's going to, again, make you uncomfortable and anxious. What do you shred? Anything that has your signature, any kind of account numbers, if you're not sure if it should be shredded or not, go ahead and shred it anyway, right? Just to be on the safe side. So here is a great guide that I encourage you to print and put it in your home office, put it on your refrigerator, anywhere where you can refer to it frequently. How long should I keep certain papers, okay? So it depends. The first, the first six items are for different things. And what I would like for you to focus on is the last category, it's called keep forever. This is a very important category. I encourage you to either purchase a safe that you can buy an expensively at Home Depot or Lowe's, or you can open up and get a safety deposit box in your local bank. These are the documents that you're going to need throughout your life, right? Most of them are work certificates, marriage certificates, divorce decrees, um, home improvement expenses, passports, anything that is important to you that you will use throughout your life should be kept very much safely. Okay, because if God, for something, God forbid something happens to your home, it is very difficult to replace those papers, right? So this is a great list for you to kind of have an idea. All right, let's talk about donating and throwaway piles that we have made earlier on. Throwaway, do take advantage of your regular scheduled trash and recycle days, right? So as a rule of thumb, Tell yourself that every time you need to put out trash, if you go for something, add some of those things to your trash pile. Okay, so take advantage of those because they're already there for you. A lot of townships have bulk trash days, so see if yours does as well. Where you can bring a bunch of stuff in your car and you get to throw it away. 1-800-GOT-JUNK and Junk King trucks, you've seen them around, you've heard their advertisements. What I can tell you is that they're not 
cheap. Um, they are great because they work long hours and they're available sometimes at the last moment, which does happen to come handy if you need last minute things. But that's where, uh, from what I understand, sometimes to fill that truck, it can cost you six to seven hundred dollars. Electronic recycling, remember that you cannot put electronics to the curb anymore, right? Those, th those items will not be taken away and they will sit on your curb for a while. You need to take advantage of a couple of uh, resources. Best Buy will take one or two items per person per day. Some townships have electronic recycling centers, so check with yours. Uh, counties often hold electronic recycling days, maybe once a quarter or twice a year. You need to check on when those dates are. You need to put them on your calendar because that's, that's when it's a good idea to bring everything, right? So again, you make a pile in your garage, in your shed, you have that date on your calendar and you plan on taking advantage of it, okay? So what we're talking about is usually computers, laptops, monitors, printers, TVs, especially, right? Old phones, keyboards, things like that. Amazon has a trade-in program that you can look into to see depending on, they'll ask you some questions of what you have and then depending on what you have, they will give you some options as well. Hazard trash days. There are certain things that you cannot put into trash or recycle. Okay, so here's a list of usual uh, suspects. Aerosols, used motor oil, propane tanks, you can't just throw them away. Batteries, oil paint, right? Not the water-based paint that we usually use to paint our walls, but oil paint, okay? Specialty light bulbs that we use now, the ones that are long-lasting, have to be disposed of properly. Again, most of the counties and townships have specially uh, set up schedules throughout the year to put that on your calendar, get a box, put all those things, and then take advantage of that um, special day that your county provides. Furniture. I can tell you from experience that furniture is one of the hardest things to get rid of. If you can't sell it, if you can't donate it, which happens sometimes, it, is, it takes the longest to get rid of. So that is on your game plan. You need to plan accordingly and be patient. Here's the one good website that I found um, you can check them out for local locations. There's not a lot by us. However, it is an option. If you plan on throwing a bunch of things away, one of the good options is to use Baxter, right? It is through waste management, and it's basically a dumpster in the back, right? I, I have a picture there. You buy the bag. You can get it at Home Depot on Amazon. It's $30, and then you schedule a pickup. So what you want to do is definitely maximize the use of that bag. You fill it up as high as possible, and it's a great way to get rid of a bunch of trash that you have. Maybe you had some renovations going on in your home. Donations. Here are some good suggestions for you that we have locally, right? Salvation Army, Goodwill, uh, Good Stuff Thrift Stores in PA, what we talked about already uh, to donate things to pet stores and animal shelters, Purple Heart. Um, and some companies like Purple Heart would actually come to your door and pick up your donations. You just have to call and schedule. Right? So if you're tight on schedule and you don't want to run around, this is a great way of doing it. If you're on social media, you can post things on Craigslist, Facebook yard sale groups for free items, and neighborhood groups are great as well. For books, definitely uh, check out your local library. Local assisted living homes would love to have some books because they are building libraries for their residents. The books can be recycled. You just have to remove the hard covers and throw them and the rest of the books can be recycled. I also found interesting that uh, some neighborhoods have little, little free libraries. They are really small, almost like a bird sized houses, and they house books. So what you can do is you can take a book out, you can bring book in and enjoy a book. So those are really cute. Check with your church if they are running any kind of um, projects or you know they're doing some kind of dry donation drives as well. Beauty products. You can use TerraCycle and Project Beauty Share to donate your makeup. With regards to toys and stuffed animals, that has been a hot topic because uh, often we don't know what to do with them. Check with your local police departments and organizations that help kids in uh, emotional situations. They will collect the toys sometimes to give them to children. What about these things? These things that I'm talking about are things that we keep because they give us meaning, right? That they were given to us as gifts, as keepsakes. So let's talk about a couple of those ones. Greeting cards. 
I'm guilty too, right? You have some really meaningful ones that I have gotten over the years from my clients to help them make the move. And uh, the suggestion is, is you frame and make a collage out of some of the, the best ones, the most meaningful ones, and then you recycle the rest. If you truly want to keep the messages in those cards, you can always scan them and keep them in a separate folder. Keepsakes from loved ones, right? This is a hard one for a lot of people. The recommendation is that you choose a few people, a few pieces to display. You can make some kind of piece of art, right? A collage or a frame. And then you take photos of the larger pieces and other pieces to keep memories. Give some to your family, right? An extended family. And that will be the best way of doing it. Photos and albums. This is huge. A lot of us have albums and uh, so the albums have disintegrated. Some of the pictures are starting to disintegrate. How do we keep those memories? The best way to do that is to digitize them. Here's a couple of options. You li local libraries have options, just check with them, to be able to scan to a USB drive. It's a little thumb drive. You can scan them on and keep them that way. Costco Wholesale does offer services uh, and you can get a uh, picture scan then you can get VHS tapes converted. This is something actually that I need to do because my wedding, uh, my wedding um, album is on, still on the VHS tape. And they can also convert reels, photo slides, and Betamax as well. A scan cafe we found online service. This is what they do. Uh, they can get your photos scanned in. Um, and then there's a couple of other options, uh, a couple of companies online that you can check out as well. The barn has burned down and now I can see moon. What I want you to think about, because these are emotional things and these are not going to be easy to do, is that just to remind yourself that you're not casting those memories aside, you're not throwing things away. What you're doing is just creating breathing room and more space in your life, right? So that way you're recognizing what's most important is not the things that are in your closet that are weighing you down or things you need at. With regards to DVDs and CDs and VHS, nobody's going to accept VHS anymore, so you can just recycle them in their plastic and then you can donate the rest. All right, you want to sell things and who can help you? Here's a couple of websites to consider, uh, eBay and Etsy. Etsy is a sister site for eBay that sells things that are more handcrafted, handmade. Uh, they have some really unique pieces on there. You can order a clean out bag and fill it with women's and kids clothes and send it back. And it's a company called ThreadUp. They will try and sell the items for you and give you money or they will recycle the clothes. Craigslist and Facebook sale groups are great if you're on social media. If you are able to use apps on your phone, here's a couple of ones that you can use to sell very easily. You can take a picture, post it, and then make a safe meeting with the person who is buying your items. If you are a member of Next Door Neighborhoods, it's an it's a online um, neighborhood right where you live. It's a great way to get rid of things. You can put things to sell there or just to get rid of and put things on the curb. Poshmark is a company that sells things that are more upscale. If you have maybe some designer items that you would like to sell, uh, that might be a great one to check out. Then you can always use a, the, the, the trusted with time source of hosting a garage and yard sale on a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday and get rid of things that way. You can use an online sale company, or if you are working on getting rid of everything in the home, where we've had to help some clients do that, you can do an estate sale and hire a company to do that. They will come in, they will sort, take pictures, advertise everything in exchange for commission rate. Who can help you? Friends, family, um, I, I think that personal organizers are some of the best because they truly know how to do it in the, um, in the most efficient amount of time. And you can hire an estate sale company, as I mentioned before, for larger volume jobs. All right, your action plan for today is you need to grab a notebook that's going to be strictly for your decluttering plans for your home. Here's some questions that I am posing to you today that you need to ask yourselves. What's bothering you in your home, right? Why do you want to start doing this? What are your some concerns and why are you doing this in the first place? If you need help, who can you ask? Do you need to hire someone to help you? And when would you like to be done and why? 
Right? You may not be able to have a deadline or decide on the project when you're going to be ending, maybe six months from now, because you just don't know, and that's okay. The idea is to jot down your thoughts and um, to be able to have the ability to create a plan. Purchase a painter's blue tape to mark and sort larger items. A painter's tape is great because you can write on it with a Sharpie. You can mark the items that you want to keep or you can mark the items that you don't want. So that way when you have people coming in to take them to Salvation Army, they're easily recognizable. Set a date and time when you want to get started, right? If you want to use my suggestion on a Saturday, that's great. Also, if you're not sure where to start in your home, my recommendation is to start in with your most favorite room in your home. If you get that room done, it's gonna give you a burst of energy and sense of satisfaction because that is your favorite room in your house where you spend the most time in. And use this handy room by room guide from this workshop to help you and guide you through, right? Just remember, it's little steps, one foot in front of the other, a little bit at a time, and it's gonna get you to your final destination. Here's what's next. I wanted to thank you for coming today and sitting in. If you are looking to get a list of contractors, recommendations, companies to help you with the sorting, organizing, and selling, we're here to help you. If you're looking to get a uh, complimentary home updating consultation, because that is your next game plan, we're also here for you as well. And for the schedule of our other upcoming workshops, uh, you find us on bit.ly forward slash live with Olga. We have a bunch of other workshops scheduled for the next two months to help you be a responsible homeowner. Any questions? Have I? Oh, thank you. No, I don't think so. That was great. Okay, great. All right.